Hello and welcome to another short video. I am doing this as a sort of telling you guys how I record because a lot of you guys have asked and I have gone through this with Ninja but I want to show her well I want to show everyone how I record because it has been requested a couple of times so the first steps is you need all of these I use all of these programs Handbrake, Audacity, uh, QuickTime, uh, GIMP, uh, uh, Quick pl QuickTime Player and there's this last one which is Soundflower and currently one sec currently I don't have it on the um, uh, I don't have it on the desktop because it is not uh, I guess it's used for more than just recording it's used for everyday stuff as well so I'm going to show you uh, how I use all of this. So down here I have a folder, ignore these, I actually am uploading something at the moment. I'm going to do a preview and I'm going to take you through the steps of how I set up my recording. So this is how, uh, this is how I set up my QuickTime. So I've got the screenshot here of QuickTime and you open it and you go into file, there is a new, there is a um, bar called the new screen recording and it'll uh, once you press it this little um, I guess little window should come up and it doesn't get any bigger it should be over here somewhere on my screen but I'm not sure if it will show up in the recording or not and so yeah this is basically what you get uh, the little bar underneath is the feedback so you can listen to it I think but I set it to zero because normally I use this to record the sounds coming from my computer so game sounds and Skype sounds and over here uh, so this is the little arrow on the right hand side you press it and you come down here and I I personally use Soundflower but for this one I have actually used my microphone here the, uh, the Plantronics GameCon 780 I have used that as my uh, microphone today uh, when I'm recording this because I want to show you audacity from like the first steps so you go on Soundflower and sh it should record all of your um, gameplay sounds your Skype sounds so your Skype call should be crisp and unless they have fan noises in the background of theirs then obviously you can't edit that out unless you take it out and edit it on audacity so next so once you once you set that onto a setting, to check it's working, uh, play just I I have opened iTunes in the background somewhere and I've played a song, and you see the little bar on the bottom. If that flickers and shows you like lots and lots of little bars, then it is recording sound coming from your computer. At this point, you might not be able to see it from your uh, from your death. You might not be able to hear it through your computer okay so next up but obviously if the bar is moving it's working okay oops 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 oh I went too far there okay so this one here is you press the red button and this should come up click to record the full screen or drag to record part of the screen for me I record all of my games in windowed mode because if you have it in full screen mode then it's slightly harder to coordinate I guess but for me it's uh, all about the upload time getting the finished product to you guys so if I have it in HD the export time will be a lot uh, a lot more I guess yeah so this is what it should come up if you want to select something just click and drag and this window should come up and everything outside the window will be blacked out so this dark bit will not be recorded this light bit will will be recorded and then once you let go you should see oops once you let go you should see this start record so you can adjust the sizes with these little round um, round adjusters on the side you click and drag and you adjust however you want and then once you're finished with the product you've outlined the window click start recording and then that should start and then wait isn't that the first one okay anyway so we're gonna close this now and we're gonna move on to the next one so the next one I use is audacity audacity can't be used 
unless you have Soundflower. I in the description I will give you links to download all of these. This is for Mac only because I use a Mac, so I will have only this for Mac. But obviously you can find the equivalent. So I'm gonna go into Soundflower first and. In Soundflower, basically, if you don't already have it up here, like this little flower, then you've got a. Once you've downloaded it, follow the instructions for install. Go into your launch pad and open it here, Soundflower Bed. So you click it, and it's it's done. And then it should open here. The next step is to click it. And for me, I have the Soundflower coming through my plate tr uh, Plantronics at the moment. You can have it in built-in output, then it will come out of your speakers, uh, or you can have none at all. And e the next thing you want to do is go into audio setup. And for me, I have like Soundflower here and Plantronics here. So the Plantronics is um, where my uh, my headset and the Soundflower is I have as my output. So you need this to re be able to record with QuickTime Player. That's the normal one. That's the um, free one you get with all Macs at the moment. So that was free for me, but I think for Windows you have to pay. Uh, I'm not sure how much. Don't quote me on it. I think it might be about twenty, thirty pounds, something for it. And don't quote me on it. I don't know. So. Uh, I got it free. The Soundflower, you got it here, and you set this one. You right, you highlight it as um, you can highlight it, and then right click, and you should use this option here. Use this device for sound output. Obviously, I don't have it already, so normally I would have it on. Um, say the 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 technical one will be the built-in output, so it'll be here. But what what I want you to do is go down to Soundflower and then use this as a sound output. You can adjust it out here at the top for it to be the, um, coming through the speakers or coming through your headset or whatever. You still be able to hear the sound, but this allows you to record the sound as well that you're hearing. I use Plantronics as my microphone. Obviously, you use whichever microphone you have or you have in the built-in microphone. Uh, I have in the past. I have used a set of uh, Sennheiser uh, headphones that came with a. Uh, a mic so I used that but obviously that was a bit shoddy and it was a bit garbage so yeah okay next steps so you oh, you close all of this 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 setting doesn't change anymore uh, and I've encountered a bug with Soundflower uh, if I obviously if I I'm working from a laptop if I close my laptop and I reopen it then it sort of it lags and then it closes itself so you obviously you gotta go back and then reopen it so that's the bug I found, but I think it's fixed, maybe, I'm not quite sure. So next we're going to go into Audacity. Audacity is what I use to record my voice, and um, which I can edit my fan noise, background noise, any clicks and pops that you don't want in there, you can edit out. So we're going to open Audacity, and it takes a minute. So this will come up. Um, I haven't downloaded the... Uh, I think it's Nyquist file, so it keeps coming up with this. But I don't need the Nyquist file, so I don't download it. And then it's the help page. So this is the window you're most interested in. Uh, here you have the output, and normally uh, I have it on here, the Plantronics. So any of the um, uh, error noises doesn't come through the speakers, it comes through the Plantronics. And you can obviously, if you want it to, if you want it to listen to it as well, you can. Uh, what the? You can uh, have it through the Soundflower and all that. Uh, and the mic one here is a little mic symbol. And you go down and you select your mic minus a Plantronics. And yep, that's all done. So if you want to moni monitor your uh, your mic levels, you go up to this little mic symbol up here and you click the little uh, ar down arrow on the sa side. And that first option should be Start Monitor. Right, the uh, st start monitoring is the second one. Sorry, and you click it, and these bars should show up. As I'm talking to you now, as I'm talking to you, you can see those bars move. It's actually monitoring my voice, and it should adjust by itself how much it's recording. I used to use this for um, recording some things outside, and I found that if the person you're rec trying to record is walking backwards and forwards, then it doesn't take it, it's 
and they don't stay in one place, it doesn't really adjust too well. So yeah, but obviously here it's fine. So you uh, you monitoring your voice and make sure to click your mic right up to the f to the max because I have had it down to the middle and I've had to pretty much shout into my mic to be able to for it to be audible. Okay, so the next step is you click record this little round of button here. So at, as it starts running, uh, I can I can pull it out a, a bit and it's recording my voice. And I'm also recording it on no program, but I wanted you guys to see this. So as you're talking, it records your voice. And obviously for me who needs to edit out all the fan noise, the background noise, maybe a car driving past. So you can do that. Uh, all you need to do, my tr my tip is, at the end of your recording, say, now is where I end my recording, and I go to stop my record, um, my screen recording, and I go to stop my audacity. Wait. Okay, and then click stop. This little section here allows you to listen to that background noise. So highlight it, go into effects and there's noise removal click it and get noise profile that is the part you've highlighted and then you go into file oops you go into edit file maybe um hmm i haven't really done it this way it's uh one second let me find it okay this isn't going well Okay, so basically what you need to do next is you select your whole clip. And for me, I can't actually find it on here, but for me it's Command A. Command A is just select everything. So you select a whole track, and then you go into Effects, and Repeat Noise Removal. It will use the profile you used before, this little gap of, of background noise, and then you click it and it should remove all the background noise so anything of that that sounds similar to that is removed so uh, you can't hear it now but it should be crystal clear now uh, let, let me play back through the built-in output so you can sort of catch it on my mic my, tr my tip is at the end of your recording say now is where I end my recording and I go to stop my record, um, my screen recording, and I go to stop my audacity. Wait. Okay, I'm not sure how much of that you guys caught, but it should sound crystal clear, and there shouldn't, uh, there should be lessened background noise. And if obviously, if there are still bumps and stuff, like um, say this is a cough, you just highlight it, and you go into effects, and it's silence here whoops one sec truncate silence I think it's this one uh, I'm not quite sure about that one because I don't actually use it because I cut out I I don't don't edit it, your audio here because if you edit your audio here then it might I haven't found a way that I can do it without taking like a, a couple of seconds out by accident so yeah the next thing you need to do is go into file and export and you want to export as an mp3 file so you just uh... for me i number it as the same number of my screen recording so here i might have a screen recording two so you click in two and then you click save uh, i obviously i already have a two so i'm going to name it one two three and i'm going to click save and it's gonna go uh, this one you can put artist name and all that but obviously if if you're exporting like 10 of these a day then you don't need to you just click OK and it should come up with this this is where it wants to locate that lame file of um, and I'm gonna have a link in the description where you can open this link uh, this lame file for me, I have it. Uh, I have it in another folder that I accidentally moved. So obviously, this doesn't come up after the first time. You put your lame folder, and then you put in wherever this folder is, and then you click OK. For me, I'm gonna cancel, and it should just export. And then wherever you exported to, it should come up there because I've accidentally moved it. It can't find it. So I'm gonna click cancel, 
and uh, yeah that shouldn't come up so it should be exported and for like maybe a 30 minute recording it takes about four, 3 or 4 minutes to export that should be fine if it takes more time than it uh, than the actual recording then it's not fine something is wrong go back to go through all the steps and make sure you've done it all right so next we're going to close this without saving because we don't really need it and we're going to close it next is QuickTime. So QuickTime is what I use to edit the sa the, um, the audio and the visual together. So you go into uh, for me, uh, I've got it all in the movies folder. So you go into say these two clips, uh, and you go into these two clips, and you say you want to no sorry these two clips and you want to edit them together you highlight both of them I, I highlight both of them and right click open with QuickTime 7 obviously if you're watching this in the distant future then it's not QuickTime 7 it's something else so when you're recording one tip is to when say say you're here and you're about to record. You've done the window, you've done the audio setup, and they're both recording. You want to sync them. Uh, and the thing, the, f the way to sync them is say here, you can see, I'm going to play it, and you can see. There is this distinct, if you click the menu, it's a visual cue. If you click the back to game, it's a visual cue that there is something you can match up. For me, when I'm recording with Audacity, the same time I click that back to game button, I make a <coughs> noise. So in the in this recording here, I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear this. I am very, very sorry. Oops, that hasn't gone well. Built in outputs. Alright, so welcome back to the Repso Steam. Sorry, one sec. There, that first click, it sh it it probably be very very faint because it's in the audio outputs and I have I've forgotten to record the um, the sounds coming from the computer. Normally I would, but I wanted to use Audacity for uh, for showing you guys. So you should hear that visual click. You should hear the vis uh, you see the visual, and you hear the click. Uh, so basically, what you do is you move this little counter all the way to the side, that side, and you move this to wherever here, and you use the uh, arrow keys to keep moving it frame by frame up till here. Uh, here, <laughs> there we go. So you've clicked the back to game button. So you, so you've highlighted from that point right up until the end. You do Command C, which is just copy. Uh, sorry, which is just copy. You come up to this one, which is your audio file, and you play it. You play it, and you keep your hand on the space bar, uh, space bar, and there, you stop it after you hear that click, and then that should be accurate enough that you're within maybe what three tenths of a second or something like that. That and then you do go into edit and add to movie so there you go your whole thing is synced up so uh, obviously if you're watching this this is my latest steam log so uh, guys giving you a sneak, uh, sneak preview that electric has two stacks of uh, baked potatoes so I was good on the energy okay so if you want to double check that it's already synced up go to a point where you know you were talk, you remember you were talking about something, and you were doing something at the same time. So I remember in this clip that I think here we go. I was in the jungle, and I was building my snow golem, and I sh I can hear. I, I know I'm humming to it. There we go. You can hear that I was talking about putting the head on and then I placed the pumpkin on top. So that is how you know it's synced up. Okay, so that is how I do it. And then basically, if you've, um, I don't audit, um, edit my audio. Like, I can take out the pops and stuff. 
I take out the pops and stuff here. So, say I have here, I know I ha uh, I cough by accident. I will go up to it, I will frame it between here, and then I will do Command X, which is cut here. And it, should, it will cut that the whole part out, the uh, video and the sound out. So that should um, that should eliminate it, and it will still be synced up at the same time. So that's how you do it. Obviously, you cut off the front where you didn't start the video, and you cut off the end just before you finish. So that's uh, that's a little lesson in QuickTime. They call it QuickTime Pro. They call it QuickTime Play Seven here. Anyway, so I'm gonna close this. So don't save and you close this okay next once you've done that oops sorry I forgot to tell you the most important thing once you've done that go into file and oh, one second I'm gonna open them back up I'm gonna run I'll just open this one uh, nope I'll open the screen recording because it only works with a visual okay so I op I've opened it up and you fi say you finished with this you go into file this is very very important you go into file and you go into exports say you've um, if you want to add clips then obviously you have another one you do command A you select it all you do command C which is copy you go into the other screen and you move the, l the little triangle at the top to where you want to add it in and then you go into edit and you go into add to movie don't add to selection and scale. This is how you do time lapses on QuickTime Play at 7. So you can have like a, a 30 minute video condensed down to a 10 minute video. That's how I do my mini sods. So you add to movie and it should add to that point. And it will add, add it in. And obviously you have to sync the other part of the video before you do this. So you move over everything is synced up and you just keep adding clips to it say you've done like 10 clips for one episode then you keep adding them in uh, in succession okay so once you've done that go into file export and you go into here this is where you're exporting to the most important option here is this option here export as so you go go into this menu and you export it uh, movie to QuickTime movie. I do QuickTime movie. Uh, I think you can do Windows Media, whatever else you like to do. I do it to QuickTime movie. And most recent settings, this one doesn't matter. I mean, it just uses the default settings. And you do save. And oops, I don't want to do that. Uh, I'll just call it one, two, three, and then I'll do save. So it's exporting. And that's whilst that's exporting, uh, you can obviously go off and do all your other stuff but obviously it takes a lot of uh, CPU and it takes a lot of RAM so I like to do that when say I've got something else to do away from the computer I sit down close my eyes relax all that kind of stuff okay so after you've exported so I'm gonna close it for now and the next program we're using so we've gone through QuickTime we've gone through QuickTime 7 and we've gone through Audacity you might notice this really weird one sat on the uh, sat on the desktop other other than the GIMP so you open this this is called handbrake it's a compression file so once you open it this is what you're faced with your you've got your source so it tells you um, to find the folder you want to find the file you want so say I want to do steam log 10 and I click it and I open it and it takes a little time to open it within the program and here uh, on the presets, it's toggle presets I've got a preset for YouTube and it should be I'll go through all the files for you it should be f uh, mp4 file format web optimized and just pause here and look through all of them because I'm not sure which one is the normal one as well okay so taking a look at it use this one tick this option here this is the latest version of handbrake so you have an older version then please upgrade because it has more features I guess but if you ha if you're obviously using a later version find uh, find the options it might not be in the same place so audio it should be fine subtitles it should be fine go into advanced this is the um, 
um, important one. From regular to what the? Oh, I guess it hasn't changed. Huh? I'm sure I changed it last time. Anyway, so if you want to pause here, make sure all of the um, options here are exactly the same as on this screen because that's how I found to best compress it. And then once you've sorted all that out and you've set it as a preset, I come in here, I put in the video and I click YouTube and it should be load up as a preset. Then you click start. Oops. Wait, what? This is not a file directory. Hmm. Okay. Oh yes, yes. Basically, the uh, the destination file here. I normally have another file on the f on my desktop called compressed, but obviously I moved all the files off the desktop to not let you guys see any of my personal stuff. Nothing against you guys, but it's just um, I use my laptop for other things as well. I use it for schoolwork, and I don't want anyone else seeing like the titles of things I'm working on and all that kind of stuff. So here you um. For the purpose of this, I'm just going to change uh, this. I'm going to just move it to the desktop. And then you should click Start. And this little bar will come up. And a folder should come up on your desktop or wherever you've moved it. And it should start compressing. And each one takes, I think, about maybe 10, 15 minutes. This uh, estimated time of finishing is not accurate it jumps about the place so the, uh, obviously I'm currently uploading something I'm also recording so it's slower than usual but obviously it should be quite quick a process I'm gonna cancel it for now and once it's finished it should pop up with a uh, pop-up menu saying oh everything's finished if you do things like me I compress uh, several videos at once then uh, you c you can just select another source, and you select another folder. You do go go into presets, and then instead of uh, uh, pressing start, you click add to queue, and then it should add to like a list. That it should do one after the other. So you can click show queue. Whoops. Show queue, and this uh, window should pop up. And obviously, if you have several, then all of them should be in order. So yeah. Anyway, and then once it's finished, you, you can just upload that. So uh, cancel current and can, do, can you cancel current and stop? Okay. So I'm gonna stop it because I don't need to do it, and I'm gonna close it, and I'm gonna move this to trash. Okay. So the last pro, obviously, after you've done handbrake, that is your finished product. That is whatever you're doing. You're uploading it to whatever site you want. I do it for YouTube, uh, you guys can do it for whatever uh, website you want. So the last one is called GIMP. I use this because it's a free like photo editing program. So f uh, this is what I use for my thumbnails, this is what I use for my outro. My outro will be at the end and obviously with, e uh, with all the other games you'll have different size windows and you want to scale your outro to that. I haven't done it very well in the past but now uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. Uh, if it'll open. Obviously this is for Mac. If you uh, you can find the GIMP version for Windows or whatever so you go to uh, open and I am going to do this image so I have um, recently been working on my thumbnails so Diablo 3 is one of my series so this is my thumbnail and I want to the thumbnail is 1280 by 720 so you go into here and you go into tools and you go into transform tools scale I just do uh, shift T so here it gives you a scale that you want to scale it to and for the thumbnail it's 1280 uh, with 720 and you slash enter and it should scale so you can see it's scaled here but obviously um, with the original picture was that big it doesn't quite work so you do go into edit and you do copy and then you do a new tab so you go into file new 
it opens uh, it, it, sh it asks you create a new page how big you want it to open the page the um, image size should be exactly the size of the image you want so for for the example it's 1220 720 no 1280 720 and it opens a new one and then you go into edit and paste so you've got this uh, new thumbnail version and if it keeps loading come on keep loading and obviously this isn't actually a finished product I cropped it and then I did all that kind of stuff it's all in here tools transform tools crop selection tools and all that kind of stuff and uh, GIMP is a very it's a free program and it's quite well done so it's got most of the basic tools you need in there any in-depth one I haven't explored, uh, explored so I can't tell you if it's in there or not so this is for the outro I scale it to um, however big the video size is and speaking about video size I'm gonna show you how to explore the video size so I'm gonna uh, bring up two videos so I've got an XCOM one and I've also got a Hunger Games one. Uh, I'm still in the process of finishing editing these. These haven't been uh, finishing edited. So I'm going to open these in QuickTime Player 7. And so that's the Hunger Games one. And this is the XCOM one. If you notice, there is a very, very big size difference between them. But uh, if you want to find out how big each one is, you go into Window and you go into Show Movie Properties whoops wrong one uh, you go into sh show movie inspector well I'll, I'll want to um, since I've already shown you the properties I can show you this one as well so in here say you've uh, accidentally done the QuickTime player in here and your soundtrack is your own voice but you also want to say like minimize the fan noise you just highlight it and you click extract and you ex should extract it into a new mu uh, new sound file. Quite simple, right? And then you export this, open with Audacity, and you do the fan noise. Or you say you you're recording something for maybe a time lapse, and you don't want the sound, so you can highlight the sound and then just delete. And then you should the sound should be not there anymore. So I don't want this, and I don't need to don't save. So that's how you do that. Um okay so now that you can see this XCOMS is obviously bigger than uh, than the Hunger Games video here it's normal size it will tell you how big this window is it's 852 by 477 uh, and this one is 1680 by 1049 so you want to scale a picture to those sizes so for this one you just scale and you write down those figures and it should scale it to the right one and obviously uh, if you want to do like an outro like I do uh, then you just go into QuickTime you open open image sequence and then it, it'll open this uh, window and you go find the picture you want so uh, let's just um, say where is the hmm I'm gonna just bring up one say say this one um, that was just a screenshot from before so and then it asks you how long your seek uh, you want it to be my outro is five seconds long so I think it's five seconds long so you just do five seconds per frame and then you click OK so that is just five seconds of this I can uh, adjust it down a little and I'll show you guys if you move the little thing at the bottom what the oh it's in the same folder as uh, all the other pictures anyway so for that first photo as you can see it's five seconds long until it changes if you can tell five seconds long and it changes so obviously go to a place where you don't have all your pictures clumped up or just uh, move it to your desktop where there's not another picture and all that so and then in that five seconds you can put audio over it and all that just the same method as editing before so that is quite literally 
all the steps I take, all the new ones as well with thumbnails, with the outro, everything I do to uh, through my editing and some people call it editing I don't really call it editing because it's not actually that hard for me well once you know anyway now that you've heard it from me I'm sure you can take steps to bettering your videos so thank you for joining me and I hope this has been an enlightening experience if not then I'm sorry for taking up your time if it has then please leave a comment if I've missed out anything if um, leave a like if you liked it uh, recommend it to a friend and all that stuff this is this may be the only tutorial I do because well I might go into some more in-depth stuff if I learn more all the programs will be in the description so just take a look through it and this has been Mac only so if you're looking it came here looking for Windows then I'm sorry you've wasted your time but I'm sure you can find the equivalents I'm um, QuickTime player is also on uh, available for Windows or Dacity I'm sure is also available for Windows as well Handbrake I think may be a Mac only I think GIMP may be also a Mac only too so thank you for joining me and I hope this has been a enriching experience I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.